Today's session is all about trout, rainbow trout in fact. I'm going down to a sneaky little stream that a mate told me about. I got the mud map, I'm ready to rock and roll. I always say, do the miles, get the smiles. I hope I've got a smile on my face today. In a sec. Gotta be close. As if I read the map right anyway. Well, this looks like a pretty good spot to set up camp. Got my seat, got my net just in case, and all the gear I need to catch myself a trout. Let's get this gig going. Pull that under. Pull some line out, take my sunnies off so I can actually see you. It's just a matter of running your line through the guides. Now I know it sounds simple, but a lot of people ask how to rig a rod. So if you hold the line and actually run your hand up the blank and poke it straight through the guide, it's a lot easier trying to find the hole. And just slide like that, use it as a guide, and then come out the top. And all we want is a nice amount of line sticking out the end so we can make our rig. Now the rig is very simple and I always work on this keep it simple stupid principle. These are all the things I need to make my rig today and catch a trout. So all I do to start with is literally tie a hook to the end of my line. Grab my hook and slide it on like so. I'm going to cut the tag off the end because that little bit there is a bit ratty. I'll put that away in a minute and it's simply a matter of, this is the simplest knot in fishing I reckon, put your hook on. That is a little eagle claw, it's an octopus circle because I want to release these fish most likely. And then I tie a uni knot so I lay my line up parallel against the line, wrap it around, make a loop and I simply put that tag back through five times. One, two, three, four, five. Once I've done that, a little bit of saliva just to lube it up and then pull that down, almost like a hangman's noose, it'll slide down neatly and bang, you've got the perfect little knot. Now you know it's a good knot when that tag sits pretty much parallel to the main line. Important to cut that tag nice and short so it doesn't offend our fishes. And our rig is not far from being complete. Now I just gotta add some split shots. So this is my split shots called Dinsmore, very handy little dispenser, look at that. Out pops one split shot. And it's simply a matter now of grabbing the pliers and you hold the split shot, you literally pin it so the opening on the split shot is sitting outwards and you grab your line and you literally place it over the line, give it a little squeeze, just like you would a crimp. And now we have a very small sinker attached to the line. What that is gonna do is take our bait down, but I've got one more little trick to finish off this rig. I slide this along and I simply grab one of these floats that has a little spring in the bottom, hook in over the line and that is now attached my total rig, ready to rock and roll. Well in the good old days when I used to go trout fishing, I'd lift up a few cow patties, move a few rocks and try and find a few worms for bait. But things have changed and now there is a deadly weapon on the scene. This stuff here is unbelievable. You can buy it at any Tackle World store. You literally take the lid off, it is pink and it is awesome. And all you do is pull a bit out of that jar and you mould it into a ball. Once you mould under a ball, it literally goes straight under your hook and believe it or not, the trout just love it. So I'll put the lid on that because we want to keep the moisture in it. Back down there and simply mould it around our hook and it is so easy, like that's done. Always make sure you leave some hook sticking out. Fish aren't that smart. So leave it a hook out, it's a circle hook. We want to make sure it goes in if we get a bite. And that is our secret weapon, ready to go. It's important to remember you don't have to cast 100 miles to catch a fish. It's only a small stream, there's lots of structure. I reckon the fish are going to be near the structure. That is why I picked this location. So I'll pop that over there. You've also got to remember too, that when you hook a fish, if it's a decent one, you're going to have to try and get him out. But that's the trouble, see? You cast away from the structure, you don't get bites. You go into the structure, you get bites, you lose hooks, sometimes lures, and sometimes you lose fish. But I prefer to hook a fish and lose it, than not hook a fish at all. Now I think that might have just got a little bite then. Oh yeah it did, look at that. Oh, tiny little bites. And that has not taken long at all. Really important to remember, if you get little bites and it pops back up, don't strike, because you're just gonna miss the fish. Let him take it down, and instead of striking, just slowly start to wind, you've got a much better chance of setting the hook. Mm -hmm. 
quack of the duck, just wandering around behind me. And that is half the joy of trout fishing, just getting out into the countryside and seeing things you normally wouldn't see. It's just awesome, you just get lost in your mind, I love it. Well, the pink bait hasn't worked. Let's try the pink eber shad, see if that does the job. I know there's a lot of small fish in there now because I've seen them, and I reckon that's why I can't get to any decent fish. And I have no idea how big the big ones might be, but I reckon this lure might just find them. I'm looking for a reaction bite here because basically a little fish are Oh, gotcha. Oh, first cast. That's a nice little fish. Oh, and he knows to go straight for that structure. Beautiful little fat fish, so fat little rainbow trout. I'm just going to try lifting this guy. Oh, and how's that for a fatty boomba? <laughs> that is awesome. That fish there, look how fat it is. And be very careful with slippery little trout. Calm down, mate. And treble hooks. Look at that beautiful fish. Just awesome. That is around one year of age, judging by the size of it. Beautiful coloration, that magnificent rainbow stripe. And how's that? I struggled to get a fish on bait. As soon as I went to the lure, first cast I got a beautiful rainbow trout. If he was a bit bigger, he'd be coming straight home with me, but it's one very lucky fish, it's going back. Well, how cool is that for a fishing basic? When one thing doesn't work, try something else. See you, buddy. Gotcha. Oh, it's another small fish, but that's amazing. Straight to the lure and straight away fishing success. I just love it. And that is why I love fishing so much because it just always keeps you thinking. And when you outsmart the fish, it makes you feel pretty happy about proceedings. Now that's another rainbow, very similar size year class, that last fish. Absolute beauty, fat as. As you can see, that little pink Yozuri, right in the scone. Oh, yep, oh, this is a better fish. Oh, this is a much better fish. Oh! Oh, this is a scary fish. Oh, I'm gonna back the drag off. That is a big, oh, he's going for the snags, come on. Oh, this is a big fish. Now, back my drag off, this is only six pound line. And look at that, he's just slowly taking line. There's a really good lesson for anglers here. Don't tighten your drag up. I remember selling fishing reels only as little as five years ago I was selling, people were taking their reels and they were going to Kmart buying some Araldite and they were in the drag up. But you want that line to come off the reel because that's, oh, ho, ho. that was the biggest Raylene I've seen for a long time. And when I say Raylene, I'm talking Raylene Boyle. It was a big, oh, this is a beast of a fish. <sighs> look at the size of this thing. I've got to keep it out of the structure. I'm just getting the drag up a bit, these. Look at that, look at that for a fish. That is just the perfect, Rainbow trout. I had no idea there was fish in this. Look at it. Oh, these eber shads have only got tiny, tiny little hooks. So I can't put too much pressure on it. Look at the shoulders. Oh, stay away from the snags. Stay away from the snags. Oh, my heart is pounding. Come on, come on. Yes! And the hook's out. That is a monster of a fish. Holy snapping. Trout, check that out. Now, I've got a lip grip in here. I hope I have, because I don't want to hold him. I have to look at that. When I say him, I mean her. I don't want to drop him, her, so I'm a bit excited. Oh my goodness me. Oh, come on, come on girl, come on. That is a magnificent hen. When I say hen, a female rainbow trout, Onchorichus my kiss. And as you saw, you just never know your luck when you go fishing. That's why I love it so much. Couple little bubbies and then the absolute horse. It's got to be nudging five pound and it is the perfect specimen of rainbow trout. I was actually looking for fish to eat today, but I ain't going to eat this girl. I'm going to put her back and in the next break, I'm going to show you how to make trout taste 11 out of 10. That is awesome. I've taken the thongs off. I don't want anything to happen with this fish. Look at her. So I'm going to swim her and make sure she is in perfect condition to go back. There you go, Dale. I'll take the lip grip out. Oh, what a special fish. Isn't that just unbelievable? Oh, well, I'm going to have trout for dinner, I hope, but definitely not this girl. Come on, because she is too pretty. I just want to make sure she goes back kicking. She is good to go. Well, how 
How magnificent was that beautiful rainbow trout? I just had to let her go. The good news, a recent fishing trip to Lake Talondo yielded some magnificent rainbow trout, and this is one of them. All I did was cry it, put it in the freezer, pull it out, and it almost looks as good as the day I caught it. Now, quite simple, I've removed the head and I've taken the tail off. That is simply for presentation and to fit it inside the Bradley smoker. Now what I'm gonna do is add some maple cure and also some pure organic maple syrup to give this thing some beautiful flavor. The great thing about both of these products, they actually stabilize the fat content in the fish and they hold the moisture inside there. So it'll be the second best trout you've ever tasted and I promise you won't if you'd had the first. Now it is literally this simple. So I literally get my product on the spoon there, open the belly and I start to sprinkle this very liberally over the fish. And then I cover the outside of the fish. Now I'm leaving the scales on and the skin and even though it's got that barrier, I can tell you this stuff when it sits in the fridge is going to work through that and add sensational amounts of flavour. So because I've got this on both sides of the fish now, I'm just going to pat that in, give it a good rub and that is looking just beautiful. Now for the second weapon in my arsenal, I'm going to use the old organic maple syrup. And it's a bit sticky but it's a lot of fun, literally a matter of spooning it in, getting it all over there, all over both sides. And then I can use my pastry brush just to make sure she's totally covered. Give this a little bit of a rub in here because this is the stuff that'll really get through to the flesh and give you that flavor. And there my fish is pretty much ready to go. Now this is the big thing I like to do. I actually like to sit the fish up proud on the plate like that because that is how I'm gonna smoke it. It is gonna go in the fridge for 24 hours because that way the flavor is gonna intensify and in 24 hours time, we'll be back. Well, there's our beautiful rainbow trout that has been marinating in all this maple syrup and cure for the last 24 hours in the fridge. Almost good to go. First, I've gotta turn this baby on and let me just say it is so simple. So, I turn the old smoker on, it's saying four hours. That is just perfect. The oven on. It's telling me 138 degrees. Believe it or not, I want to cook it at around 80 degrees. So I just hit oven temp and I go down to about 180. There she is there and 180 degrees is around 80 degrees Celsius. And that's telling me there 82 degrees, set to go. I've got four hours, so we are ready to smoke. All I'm gonna do is put my fish in and we're good to go. So our rainbow trout is on the tray in what could best be described as the swimming position. I'm just gonna put a little bit more maple on because you can never have too much maple. This stuff is just so good. Oh, smells like maple candy. Then, open up the door, slip her in, and it is going to taste 11 out of 10. Now, because I've got a fairly hungry crew, are you a hungry crew? I thought as much. I went and got some birds from the IGA, split chickens, Mexican and tandoori, $3.99 each. I whack them in the Bradley, in two hours they will be OMG. So, I literally slipped them in that spare space there. We're smoking anyway, we might as well use everything we've got. And the big thing people struggle with cooking, and smoking in particular, is how long do you actually cook for? You don't want to overcook, you don't want to undercook. We work on this simple rule. For every pound of flesh, cook and smoke for around one hour. Once you try different recipes, you work it out for yourself. But that trout is gonna be around four pounds, so I'm thinking just under four hours. Those chickens, probably about two pound each, so two hours should be mint. They definitely said it was not gonna to rain today. It's the last time I ever listened to them. Well, they say necessity is the mother of all invention. Introducing the cable tie. How good is that? The other thing that makes using the Bradley smoker so basic is it uses these little wooden discs. You can get them in all sorts of flavours. Today I'm using maple. You fill the chute here and it literally feeds them down, goes along a little conveyor belt. That then sits on an element, cooks, falls into a pot of water and the next one rolls through. How clever is that? Well, I've just checked the timer. The chicken's been in for just over two hours and I've left it a little bit longer to allow for all the times I've opened the door to see just how good it's going to be. The proof is in the pudding. Let's open her up. Oh yeah, baby, look at that. My crew is gonna be very excited because that is going to be so good. I'll be back in about an hour and 40 minutes. Well, this is the moment of truth. Let's get my little trout out and have a look. Oh, I can almost hang on to that. Wow, look at that. That is what I call just a magnificent piece of fish. That maple has just given that a beautiful glaze. 
the smell, it is just incredible. And I can already see the moisture welling on those wings. This is what trout fishing is all about. Enjoying the spores of your labour and eating amazing fish. At the end of the day, it ain't that hard. Put it in, press the button, and that is the end result. Cooking, it's like fishing. Just stick to the basics and you never know what could happen next. Excuse the fingers, but look at the moisture in that fish. It is unbelievable. And that's what this cooking process does. Just keeps the moisture in. Look at it through there. That is just mind blowing. And the taste. Oh, it's so good. That was, with was being the operative word, absolutely stunning. I feel like a cat in one of those cartoons. Meow.